crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I am here with 10 cards from one 6x6 paper pad. This is the new Doodlebug Designs Cream and Sugar paper pad. It has been, uh, seems to be really popular. A lot of people like it. I love Doodlebug and I don't always go for their 6x6 pads but I really like this one and the coffee theme. And today I'm going to be mostly sticking with just the paper pad and I'm going to also use one die set but um, it happens to be a banner die set not the one on the table so you could easily go without it and create all 10 cards with no additional supplies no stamps no ink just a paper cutter adhesive and the paper pad and that's because in the doodlebug collection they have a lot of um, little pre-printed things that are journaling cards in the large collection but are like perfect little sentiment blocks in the uh, 6x6 pad. So I'm going to pick just a few papers from the 6x6 pad. I'm not going to use the whole pad but I am going to make 10 cards. There were a couple of pieces of pattern paper that I kind of wanted to reserve and not use yet like the um, little iced coffee coffee cups because I want to do some different stuff with those but I selected the different cutaway or cut apart designs and I cut them all up and I did that off camera because of course you guys know how to make straight cuts but if you take you know one of the doodle bug pads and cut all that out that's going to help you be able to make a lot of cards uh, quickly with one pack of paper and really start to use up your pack and so what I did then was I chose some of the pattern papers that had relatively subtle patterns and I cut those to a standard card size with a little quarter inch border. So they're cut to five and a quarter by four and that'll go on a four and a quarter by five and a half note card. And then that leaves some of these two inch strips that I have and then I also took the donuts paper because that one's a little bit more of a bold pattern and I simply cut it into three inch strips because I'll want to use that um, as a kind of an element on the card. So basically what I'm going to do is kind of look at the pile of the um, like decorative elements. And I don't really know what the word for it is, the cut aparts, decorative elements, etc. But like they're basically little images already. So rather than having to stamp and color your own images, you can kind of use these pre-done images. And I'm going to, instead of trying to cut a whole bunch of different sizes, see if I can work with just these um, four by five and a quarter and these two inch strips and see kind of what can come out of that um, so that I'm not wasting a bunch of paper. And like I said, I do have this die set from Sunny Studios that I'm going to use to cut some banners, but you could easily cut your own banners. This one will be a scallop, so that would be a little bit trickier to cut on your own, but you could just cut a plain banner if you wanted to uh, sort of follow along a bit. But I'm just going to create a simple banner shape to put this um, die cut element on, because I think that if you just place it on top of the pattern paper, that looks a little less interesting, um, but by creating some layers, you definitely make the cards uh, a bit more interesting. And I like mixing different patterns, but I want to do it in a way that, um, like I said, only utilizes these particular shapes that I've already cut out so I can get the sort of biggest bang for my buck. And what I'm going to be doing is every time I come up with a card design, I'm just going to make two of it because with Doodlebug Pads, you get two of every paper sheet. So I get two of each of these cutout elements. There's, so this little one is like some, you know, fancy cakes, but they have uh, faces on them. So that really cutesy doodlebug style. And so I'm just going to make two of that card. So each of these is five cards um, designs and then 10 cards in total. And I know that some people really like to make unique cards for everyone, but with Valentine's Day, there's a lot of great card drives out there. Um, I believe it's called Cards from the Heart card drive that was run by Winter Sims and you can send to cards for hospitalized kids and there's um, cards with heart or something. There's, just, like, there's so many drives out there and I'm going to link to some in the video description. So I think that even though you're making two cards that are exactly the same, you could um, you know, use one for family and friends and send the other away 
for um, one of those uh, car drives. And so that way your, you know, your family and friends still feel like they're getting unique cards or you still feel like you're giving unique cards, but um, kind of serving, you know, two good causes at one time, essentially. So that, um, there's a bold piece of pattern paper that has a whole design on it, but it's a six by six design. So I don't think it really works for card making. It has a sentiment on the bottom and then a bunch of different cupcakes and treats. And so I actually just kind of sacrificed that piece and used the back, even though it's a little bit more plain. Um, so sometimes you kind of have to do that with these paper packs. While they're generally really, really good for card making, they always have one design that is like a whole six by six sheet. So if you really like that design, I would definitely suggest just going for it and making a larger card. But um, because there's always a coordinating pattern on the back, since these are double-sided papers, that works well too. As you can see, I don't have to use any sentiment stamps because they're actually sentiment strips that go with those cutaways. So again, it just makes it so easy and seamless. Now with this donuts paper, I didn't want it to be a whole card base because it's so bold, but I didn't want it to be so small either um, because it is such a fun paper and I want you to really be able to see the pattern. So I chose to instead with that, just that particular sheet to cut it into a three inch strip, like I mentioned before. So I'm going to do the same thing and create a banner like I did before, but because this is going to be a little bit bolder of a piece, I'm going to use a little bit of um, a bigger piece of it. So I used two of the banner dies from Sunny Studio, and you might have noticed on those dies, there's these little like tick marks, and that helps you to make sure that as you're die cutting, you're actually getting it, uh, that little point in the center, because you can line up the tick marks on each edge. So that's something that's, I feel like, a little bit unique about their banner dies, and I will leave a link to the banner dies and to this cream and sugar paper pad in case you're interested. Um, there's this little block here that says sugar and spice and everything nice. And it's like, that's not really a card sentiment. So I tried to think of a way I could make it into a sentiment. So I added this for you strip. So if you're looking at some of these um, little card cutaway pieces and thinking, well, that doesn't really make sense. Think about how you can pair some of the other things that are going on in the paper pad with it. Or if you can't find something quite right, then you can, you know, of course, go to your stamps. You can have um, letter stamps that you could spell whatever you need to make the sentiment make more sense. But generally, there's a good number of options in this paper pad that I thought I could make almost any of them work. Um, some of them are a little bit more lovey-dovey, so they might not be as good for like the card drives because, you know, you're not going to be sending a lovey-dovey card to someone you don't know. However, um, there are enough general sentiments that you can really make it work. You can, you know, use a hello sentiment on the outside, but then on the inside add a Valentine's joke or something like that to, um, you know, make it more clearly a Valentine card. So there was this adorable little donut and some of these images, these cutaways, are really small and they don't kind of like take up enough of the card. Um, but I really like that Don't Worry, Be Happy sentiment as well. So I wanted to figure out how I could sort of layer it up to make it a little bit more of a substantial piece so that it didn't kind of look like it was lost and floating in the middle of the card. So I'm going to take a strip of the really subtle pattern paper and um, create a whole... Uh, strip along the bottom so that it really grounds that image and gives it a little bit more of some basically visual weight and I think that that's always a good idea when you're working with some smaller images is to do something to really kind of pull them um, onto the card if you were to use another small floating element as opposed to something that goes from one side to the other, it still will look like it's just sort of floating on the card. So by pulling a strip across, you give it that sort of grounding effect. I hope that that kind of makes sense. I think people sometimes struggle with like what layout to make with some, you know, with pattern paper pads. And that's why I wanted to show a couple of different layouts. I never used exactly the same layout for any of the cards. I kind of tried to mix it up at least a little bit each time. Uh, I didn't use any sketches for this. These kind of all just came to me, but I do definitely recommend sketch sites too. If you feel like, you know, you just really want to use up a pattern paper pack, but you're not sure what to do, sketch sites are great. But a lot of times 
they'll have odd measurements and um, you might find that you wind up with a lot of scraps from your paper pad. Whereas this, I wound up with barely any scraps, just some leftover of the cutaways that I can use on future projects. But like in terms of chunks of pattern paper, pretty much used all of those because of the sizes that I chose. So you see even there, there's like a strip of smaller pink and that's basically a scrap from one of the other designs that I made. So even when I kind of trimmed away a scrap, I would keep it in the pile and then start using that shape in a way, you know, try to think of a way to use that shape in, an, in one of the next cards. So even though I really loved those donuts, they are, as I mentioned, really bold. And so they really kind of um, stand out and distract a little bit from any image that you pair with them. And so this time I decided to actually glue the donuts down and um, use the other side because it was a much more subtle pattern. But I also wanted the cards to look pretty different. So um, here I am going to show you how you can trim your own banner so that if you don't have the banner dies, you feel like you can still, you know, um, mimic some of these cards. So what I like to do is kind of judge where the center is and then cut straight up into the center, then cut from the sides. So I hope that that was clear. Um, I kind of did both papers at once just so that they would be more similar. Um, but you could do them one at a time if you feel a little more comfortable. You could also draw the triangle shape along the bottom. Um, and some people use like square punches. So there's a lot of different options to create that banner or fishtail shape. And so because I had those dies on hand and because um, I think that sometimes it's easy to tie in some similar thoughts as you go through or you're trying to make a bunch of cards. I did wind up using a banner shape quite a bit. However, I tried to kind of like change the way that I was holding the card or add some more layers so that each time, even though these banners were coming back over and over again, they were just a little bit different. I'm going to do the same thing to create banners at the end of this sentiment. This sentiment uh, says hello and it was a really long sentiment with a lot of blank space. The hello did not take up the whole yellow strip that was in the paper pack, so I kind of just tucked it behind this little cart of um, baked goods. And this way the two banners kind of, um, you know, go together. And um, I did think about how I want to place them because it looks a little awkward since that hello is kind of a long banner sticking out. So I sort of put it off to the side. If you were to keep it all the way on the pink strip, and that yellow banner just like stuck out into that middle of the red paper, I think that that would probably look a little bit awkward. So I definitely, when I'm designing cards like this, try to just take my time and play around with it before I glue it down. I find that to be pretty helpful. So here are all 10 cards, um, you know, five different designs, and then I'll just put them on some white cardstock, and that will be it for me today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I will leave you some links to the different products that I used and some of the you know card drives that I mentioned. And at the end of the video, I'll include some other videos that you might like. Thanks for watching. Bye.